At some latitudes before winter arrives, it seems that nature is in a kind of nutritional frenzy as plants, trees and shrubs show their best fruits. It's a time of plenty. Succulent, juicy, tasty fruit fattens and matures. Perfect for those with a sweet tooth. It's harvest time, and just at the right moment for surviving the winter or the long journeys of migratory birds. And there's no time to lose. Many of these fruits have a use-by date, so it's better not to let it pass. Thanks to the sugars the fruit contains, hungry forest dwellers and travelers regain their strength before the temperature drops and the landscape is covered in a white blanket of snow. At this time of year, a strong link forms between certain animals and plants. Plants basically turn into restaurants that offer their best dishes, filled with energy, sugars and fats, to delight numerous animals with plump, tasty and sugary fruits. When the countryside is exhausted after the summer, suddenly, in some hidden away places, the first signs of autumn's generous arrival can be seen. On riverbanks, juicy berries hang on bushes in clusters, but not everybody notices them. Only some animals take advantage of this fleeting abundance. Shy water voles can't reach the delicacies on offer in the fall and are satisfied with their usual ration of roots and bulbs. While they eat, they keep their eyes on what's happening on the riverbank, attentive to every noise and smell that reaches them. And rightly so, as water voles are on the otter's menu. It's probably a good idea to disappear for now. Once the danger has passed, he has time to enjoy the sense of nutritious autumn at his burrow's entrance. He may even discover some fallen ripe fruit, berries and rose hips. wastes no time in switching from his usual diet of aquatic plants and bulbs to enjoy what the new season has on offer. Rodents consume a great deal of fruit, using their incisors to break them up.
most of the fruit is consumed, and the seeds are digested along with the tasty flesh around them. In this case, the plants get no benefit from their attractive appearance. It seems the vole cannot eat peacefully, as this water shrew is determined to stick to his root. But the vole barely notices. The seeds are so delicious, and he has no intention of giving them up. The shapes, colors, and flavors of the fruits in season are not random. They have evolved to please the most discerning palates. Scientific studies show that many plants have a deeply interdependent relationship with specific animal groups. In very basic terms, it could be argued that animals get fed during difficult times thanks to plants that offer the right fruit at the right time. Moreover, plants get to travel great distances and reproduce thanks to the animals. It's a simple but effective contract. and no one's too small to be involved. These delicious fruits tempt warblers and other birds that for a brief period change their insectivorous diet to fill their stomachs with blackberries, tapaculose, and many small energy-packed fruits. Because at this time of year, insects are less abundant. As the berries of the forest come into fruit, countless small birds are on hand to eat them. These birds are vital to disperse the seeds of many species of trees and shrubs. And in order to germinate, the seeds need to go through the digestive tracts of birds. It's not necessary to wait for fall to eat berries. Even in spring, the first blackberries are eaten by black cats, who augment the diet of insects that they feed to their chicks with sugary fruit. Extensive mountain beech forests are the home of the big bears. There's plenty of food. And the bears share something in common with water voles and birds. They too love berries. Iberian Peninsula brown bears are mostly vegetarian. Occasionally, they hunt small animals, lifting up stones in search of ants and their eggs, or snacking on carrion, 
but their preference is for grass shoots, bulbs and fruits. In fact, the fruit that ripens at the end of the summer is crucial for their survival. Blackberries, blueberries and cranberries, which they eat by their thousands each day during the summer, help them to gain weight in preparation for winter. During these days, they spend most of their time eating. As the summer passes, bears and other forest animals modify their diet as various berries mature, appear and disappear. In spring, Bears eat plenty of grass. In summer, they eat ants and blueberries. And now comes the sweetest time of year. Hazelnuts, acorns, beech nuts and chestnuts will be the bulk of their diet. Just when they have to store more fat, these nuts provide them with all they need for their reserves. As bears can lose up to 40% of their body weight during winter. Bears become compulsive in their search for acorns and chestnuts and won't pass up any that they find. For mother bears who give birth to cubs in winter, it is essential to build up a substantial hoard of food. Her survival and that of her cubs depends on the autumn harvest. Although the countryside looks dried out after the summer, it's a very important time in the life of deer. Their courtship begins just after the first rains, when the fruits of the oak trees mature between October and November, just at the height of the deer's rutting. And this is no coincidence. Does, the female deer, need sufficient nutrition at this key time in their reproductive cycle? The leaves and acorns of the oaks are their best food, while the grass grows back after the first autumn storms. For the stags, it's a very hard time. They may not eat for days as they spend their time defending their harems, jousting with other males and mating with any receptive females. It's a frenetic time, leaving them exhausted. Fights, love affairs and the rut. For several weeks, these are the only activities that will consume all their energies. Once the rut is over, stags desperately look for acorns. Instead of energy drinks, they take these natural tonic pills, which they harvest with their antlers.
The minimum age at which an oak begins to produce acorns is conditioned by environmental characteristics, varying between 15 and 20 years. The nutritional value of the acorn is very high due to its carbohydrate and lipid content. But they have one drawback. The concentration of tannins in their skin irritates the gastrointestinal mucous membranes, reducing the absorption of nutrients. So there's no other option but to eat all they can to get the most out of the acorns. After a few weeks, the ripe acorns start to fall from the oaks. Until now, they have been safe from almost all the waiting hungry mouths. Many animals look for the tasty acorns during the winter. Boars are not as adept as deer, lacking the tools to shake the branches, so they're forced to wait to fill their bellies until the acorns fall. That finally happens in late fall or even in winter. And the wait is a blessing in disguise, as it's just now that food is scarce and the acorns substitute other foods. the boar get plenty of nutrition from acorns, which are poor in protein, but rich in carbohydrates, which are easily convertible into fat that accumulates and forms a very welcome insulating layer, now that temperatures are so low. Acorns are also high in calories, with 50% starch, sugars, and significant amounts of vitamin C and carotene. Each oak tree produces no more than 20 kilos of acorns a year, so the boars have to roam the oak forests thoroughly in search of winter goodies. Their keen sense of smell allows them to find the acorns in the vegetation, and their delicate snout enables them to choose only the healthiest and sweetest nuts. After eating, nothing is better than a good mud bath. Even in winter, if the day is sunny. For boars who enjoy eating and other pleasurable activities, it's important to keep the coat in good condition and free from parasites. Besides bathing in the mud, they also use its strong smells to mark their territory, impregnating the boundaries where their coveted oak trees grow. Mediterranean oak forests are a much frequented restaurant for the most diverse customers. Deer and wild boar are not the only large mammals interested in its Michelin star dish, the sweet acorns. Birds also search for these tasty morsels during winter. In fact, various species of crow are very fond of acorns and travel to the oaks daily to find newly fallen fruit. 
Jackdaws, cranes, carrion crows and wood pigeons have a special liking for them. Jackdaws hunt carefully to find some that are free of worms. Each acorn typically weighs between 2 and 7 grams, which means that a kilo of acorn may be made up of between 250 and 400 fruit. Regardless of how hungry a jackdaw is, it takes its time feeding on its acorns. Firstly, selecting a good one, then opening it with its beak because the bark is indigestible. Only then is each acorn assiduously pecked. From dawn, birds, in particular the wood pigeon, arrive at the oak in large flocks that can reach into the thousands. During winter, hundreds of thousands of pigeons from across Europe come to the oaks, escaping the cold and the lack of food that affects the north and center of the continent. Their final destination is a warm place full of food, the oak trees of southern Spain. The pigeons are gluttons and are skilled in gobbling down the acorns which replenish them after a tiring journey. Unlike jackdaws, wood pigeons eat the acorns whole. Their crop is strong and full of small stones and grit, which they swallow intentionally to help digest the tough acorns like a kitchen garbage grinder. The pigeons are unbothered by the hardness of the acorns and the tannins they contain. They don't even notice how bitter or sweet they are. They simply swallow them down. In areas where the seasons change, places where the weather varies between harsh and benign, fruit-bearing plants are essential for many animals. This is the case in Patagonia, which alternates between very cold and dry winters and a temperate season during which its resilient plants flourish. At first sight, this may not look like a lovely spot to picnic on limitless delicacies, but the animals living here know how to make the most of it. Finding food on these immense arid and cold plains can be difficult. Among the fauna of Patagonia, a bustling and colorful parrot, the burrowing parrot, is a highlight. It's a migratory species that arrives in the south during good weather and sets up colonies in the cliffs next to the sea where they dig deep nesting burrows. They will spend the coming months here and raise their broods. It is the best time of year. They always travel in company, and apart from their seasonal migrations, they're also nomadic, a strategy they have evolved to find food in their favorite places, such as scattered dry forests and the shrub-strewn steppes. They feed on seeds, usually picked off the ground, but they also fly to different plants and trees, thistles and even cactus.
the berries of various shrubs are an important component of their diet. Providing around 2% in November and December, and up to 35% in March, when plants offer their best fruits. Clearly, animals across the world employ different and various strategies to take advantage of the tasty delicacies the seasons have to offer. <laughs>